Hello, welcome to Total Fight Time. I'm your host, Major League of Gaming Trap. This is the series where I choose a bunch of random characters to fight each other. We will learn about their power, strength, weaknesses to see who would win a fight or not. Alright, let us see the fighter for tonight. Spamton G. Spamton is the incarnation of a spam advertisement program, acting as salesman within the cyber world. He was relatively unsuccessful compared to his peers, until he met an unknown entity on the phone. This entity helped him, allowing him to become one of the top members of society. However, the entity eventually stopped helping him, causing all of his riches to go away and first and causing him to be reduced to which have nobody living in the dumb. Upon Fritz's arrival, he tried to use the Lightner in order to gain access to a secret piece of robotic armor in the Queen's basement, which was generated from the Lightner's hopes and first and dreams. Using his newfound body, he attempted to achieve true freedom and take over the Cyberwell, but was soon defeated by Chris Ampers and company. He can mildly hurt Chris, who is the Lightner. The Lightners are said to be capable of creating dark fountains, with Hurley himself about to make one before as they stop him. Dark worlds have been shown to contain the T's and percent starry skies. Dark fountains create dark worlds. Dark fountains pierce endlessly into the sky, meaning they are endless. Too. For the fountains to rise endlessly into the sky, the sky would have to be endless. Too, meaning that dark worlds are infinite in size, making him infinite universal level. He is able to keep up with Chris, who can dodge numerous lasers from Queen the Thrash Machine, the former of which travel in straight lines, are referred to as lasers and first and don't explode on impact, the latter of which are heavily in flight of light speed, as the laser head allows the Thrash Machine to enter laser mode, in which it emits the light over it during the fight with Eka Queen, making him faster than light. He should be at least as durable as an exhausted relief, who took the destruction of his roller coaster and first and withstood a huge explosion from clean wires while exhausted. He seems decently intelligent, although he has failed to be a successful salesman on his own and first and is very mentally unstable in his present state. Despite this, he was able to partially orchestrate the events in the Snow Raider by selling the phone ring to Chris, and as a result, had managed to usurp the Queen's mansion by the end. As Pantoneo, he is much stronger than before, claiming to have three times the firepower, and for stand having that fleet surpassed devil as he intended. The robot used in his creation was created by Flash to possess an incredible power. He can create an underground city during his boss fight, and was able to remove it entirely. He is mentally unstable and first and glitchy. In addition, he can seemingly lose control over his own actions if he tries to reveal things he is full out of. As with all darkness, he is restricted to his own dark world and first and will eventually turn into stone when venturing outside, or turn into a basic object if he is brought in the light world. As Pantoneo, his wires can be cut, which completely disrupts his movement once broken, although it should be noted that it took the combined efforts of three equally powerful foes over a long period of time to accomplish this, to the point that it was better for Chris to battle him normally in the snow prey route. Overall, even with those flaws, Spanton G Spanton is still one of the Lightner's strangest foes to ever create the Dark World.
creative artificial intelligence networking entity is the whimsical Iron Master Empress and host of his show, bringing his human inhabitants on several adventures to prevent them from going insane, or else they go to the point of abstracting. Kane should be stronger than the other characters who reach their breaking point. If characters reach their breaking point, they could flip to reality. He is regarded as God by the NPCs of Candy Canyon Kingdom. He created the Candy Canyon Kingdom, which has the day and percent night cycle, implying the existence of a sun. This means that time affects the game, making him spatial universal level. Pommy entering an exit or in the tent that led to the void also resulted in the void pulling Pommy into it at the speed that seemingly vocalized particles found within it in her perspective. Yet earlier, Kane was able to freely warp to found that location relative to the ground, making him faster than life. He presumably scales above Zubal, whose head survived flying out of the point queen, on the from being crushed by Kofmo, and for San Pommy and for San Gondigu, who survived launching them themselves in a syrup buffer from out of bounds back to the map. Kane is an artificial intelligence who is advanced enough to understand human emotions and percent can convey information super fast. He uses hundreds of OP eyes to be observant, and percent he has control of nearly everything in the amazing digital surface. In flight actively contributes presenting technology the artificial intelligence behind the NPC characters, with the latter seeing him as their god of world and percent can be claiming to be created by him as just obstacle. However, at the same time, Kane is detected by Gooseless to fall for all rebel bank and percent false statements. Being insane, that his mind is always buzzing with terrible ideas, having a hard time understanding humans and can't tell the difference between whoever is a human or NPC, came up with his own name and percent turned it into an acronym because he thought it would make him seem more professional. Survive your new career, you best obey. Hey, Kinger, come over here. Back me up. Oh, oh hi, Promni. Having another panic attack? And me too. Here's some advice. Time is abstract here, and sanity's low. All through the years, Kane's been running this show. Kane is somewhat crazy and percent insane. Cobble sometimes There's accidentally annoys Kane instead of helping. Why not collect insects? Overall, even with those flaws, Kane is still a very powerful and percent amazing ringleader for the amazing digital circus. Alright viewers, now that the prey analysis is done, let us get into who wins this fight and why. This fight is quite an interesting fight. Kane is superior to Spanton in strength, durability, and intelligence. Not only that, Kane has an overwhelming amount of abilities that Spanton wouldn't dream of having. Now here's the interesting thing, both theories aren't completed so we don't know their fullest potential, but from what we have currently, Kane is far more impressive than his opponent. So in conclusion, Kane wins due to being far stronger, more durable, more intelligent, and having far better abilities. Now, if you want to see a rematch with Kane going up against a different opponent, such as Sonic X, let me know through the voting poll. Next time on Total Fight Time.